I had a prejudice of America that resembles like that of most Europeans and probably today most Africans. But it was a prejudice I did not have in Kenya. It's a prejudice I developed in, uh, in the Netherlands and in Europe. And the prejudice was Americans are fat, they're, they're violent, they like to invade other countries, and they're ignorant. There is no nuance in the American way of doing things. It's all black and white. Unfortunately, when I come to America, it is an image of America that Americans are beginning to have of themselves. When I see President Obama go to Saudi Arabia and bow, and go to Egypt and apologize, I kind of feel like if you repeat a message often enough, people ha start to see themselves that way. But when I come to America, that's not the image I have of Americans. Now, Americans continuously ask me about Islam in America. And while promoting infidel, I was left with the impression that most Americans regarded Islam as an issue of foreign policy. You talk about Afghanistan, we talk about Iraq, we talk about Egypt, you know, how can we aid them or how can we use military means uh, to fight terrorism. But it wasn't really a matter of American domestic policy. It wasn't an American domestic problem. And I noticed a, a naivety that I had seen in Europe years ago in America about the presence of radical Islam. There is a small group of people who are nowadays called neocons, and they're called right wing or ultra right wing or whatever you like, who are closely following jihad in America. But the mainstream Americans, especially on the liberal side of things, seemed to think it is a problem that Europeans have. This is not a problem that we have. I move on and reflect on it's not just women who are treated badly or at least in the eyes of some of you who were treated badly. Some of them can't make up their minds about how women are treated in Islam. Um, but for those of you who can make up your minds, who have read Infidel, who asked questions about how are things between you and your family, I felt I owed to you to tell you about the relationship between my brother and my father. How little boys are brought up. And I use that as an illustration because it wasn't just my brother and my father. It was the life and the parenting of all the little boys that I saw. Little boys who were taught that they were heroes, they were little kings on the one hand. They were expected to behave as such. They were told to chase lions. My brother was told, you are going to conquer other tribes, even though we had moved from tribal society and we live in urban society. We live in cities where, when I was five years old in Mogadishu, we didn't want to drink water from the tap because it was too warm. That's the context that my brother is born into. But my grandmother and my mother and my father and all the men around him tell him he's going to conquer other tribes and he is going to behead lions and show his bravery through the old uh, nomadic way of life. So there is that disconnect between the context in which he is growing up, which is modern or at least urban cities, not like New York, not like Washington DC, not like Amsterdam or Berlin, but cities nevertheless. And yet not his parents and his community not giving him the instruments that he needs to be successful in a, moral, in a modern context. Having come to the Netherlands, having come to the West, I discovered that there are, there are value differences. There are value differences in parenting, in parenting on many, many levels, but in parenting on those three key universal themes, sexuality, where women, where I come from, women are subjected, are hidden away from men, subjected to all kinds of cruel treatment because their sexuality is seen to be something overpowering that will bring the entire family, community, tribe, nation into disorder. It is regulated by a desire to keep them virgins. And the way to keep them virgins is not only to cover them, but recently, especially in cities where their own parents move them to, it is to cover them up, it's to pull them from school, 
and increasingly it's to marry them off at an early age. Marry them off at an early age. Now, why do I protest against it? Why do I see a problem in that? Because I see that parenting um, deficiency repeat itself. You have two people who have not selected one another. They are too young to have children. The children come, the women are ignorant, the men are absent or violent, and the children they have are also treat, subjected to the same kind of violent treatment, to the same kind of disconnection. Now, this doesn't apply to every Muslim family. It doesn't apply to every Somali family. But it applies to enough families from Muslim immigrant countries that have Europeans, especially, scratching their heads in puzzlement and bafflement and saying, why, in God's name, are they not assimilating? Personally, I have reached the conclusion that the moral framework that my father gave me regarding human sexuality, the family, regarding violence, regarding money and human resources have failed. And once upon a time, in a certain cultural context, they were an answer to those contextual problems. But they are now superior answers. And those superior answers have been offered in the name of the Enlightenment that, yes, I, am, I proudly admit I am bedazzled by, that religiosity and religion. I got letters after infidel of people from Muslim countries telling me, I understand everything you say about Islam, and I agree with you, but I do not want to be an atheist. So I've become a Christian. Or can you offer me a different religion? I'm an atheist. They're asking me if I can prescribe another religion. And you know what? I do want to, and that's what I do in Nomad in chapter 16. I not only prescribe moderate, enlightened Christianity as a force of competition with Islam, I do not only prescribe it, but I call upon those Christians to stand up and compete for the hearts and minds of Muslims with the radical jihadists, with the Wahhabis, with the Saudi money. You cannot defeat an idea by bombing it out of people's heads or imprisoning them. You can offer them a better idea, a superior idea, and hope to persuade them. 